Welcome to Let Freedom Ring. Uh, we know it's been a crazy day on social media today. We're going to try to be a little more calm here on the show. Uh, but my guest this week, Lou Silvano, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Dan. Yeah, pleasure to have you. Let's get to know you a little bit. Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? I'm from the North Shore of Mass. Uh, so I grew up in Peabody. I live in Danvers now. Um, I love the area. It's a you know great place. So Awesome, awesome. Now, did you go to Peabody High School? Is it a Peabody High School? Yeah, or? yeah. So uh, I, I did go to Peabody High School for, you know, kind of first year, first half of my freshman semester. Um, and then it got a little hectic, uh, and I ended up uh, transferring over to St. Mary's in Lynn, where I graduated. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, they, they call it, what's the Lynn saying? Lynn, 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 Lynn City of Sin. <laughs> you don't come out the way you went in. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's definitely a saying. Um, uh, <laughs> It's crazy, man. No, no. Did you play any sports while you were in high school? I or? played football and baseball. Okay. Uh, definitely. I made uh, varsity my freshman year. A um, couple things happened in my life, and I ended up taking a little step back, so I ended up playing JV for, um, you know, sophomore and, and junior year. And then senior year, I kind of um, focused more on football and stuff like that. Nice. Um, still love baseball. Baseball is my passion. Uh, when I uh, got... Um, when I went to Dean College, the coach always asked me, are you a baseball player that played football or a football player that plays baseball? And yeah. I was like, I'm a baseball player that plays football, coach. Don't worry about it. So yeah. I kind of transitioned back and got my swing back. So I feel like Tom Brady says that sort of too. Because yeah, he always yeah. said how much he loved baseball, but, you know. But at heart, he's all football. So. Uh, I got to ask this real quick, just being a big baseball guy that you are, yeah, yeah. Are, are you as upset about uh, Xander Bogarts as so many people are? So, so many hot takes today. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, you got to look at it from all different angles. You know what I mean? I, he's 30 years old, and he's just signed an 11-year contract. That's, that's a long time to keep somebody until they're 40. Is he good? Don't get me wrong. On the other hand, I'm happy he got what he wanted because I don't think the Red Sox were going to, you know, put into that at being 30 years old. 26, 20, 24, 25 you want to you want to take an 11 year contract at that sure sure but i don't i don't know i think i think we'll be okay with the <laughs> signing of that outfielder now all we need is uh pedro serrano right no yeah, I'm just yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be but, great uh, that would be hysterical so um i think i saw someone say that on facebook so i had to throw that in there yeah no no well it, and like you said those like i remember when albert pujols signed his 10 year deal and I remember being like, really? And it didn't, it, you know, and once it was yeah. over, I was like, that deal, wow, I never thought that deal was ever going right. to end. Right, right, And I don't think it panned out great. See, yeah, I don't, you know? I don't know. I mean, he's, again, he's older, and, and you're getting, I mean, I just watched Moneyball again for like the fourth time, so it's like with David, the same thing with David Justice. He was just like, I don't need you to be the play you were then. I need you to be the <coughs> play you are now. And, you know, with the whole just be a leader and, you know, ride this out and i'm not paying for the the person you were then i'm paying for the person you are now so it's tough when, when the players get older especially when they play as many games as they do and stuff like that so no i totally agree i didn't have a big problem with it i'm like when you really think about how long he's been with this team it's been a long, a long time. time a long i mean time. he was there for the 2013 world series yeah and that's going on you know 10 years ago so that's what i'm saying um i'm not one of those red sox fans that's just like yeah you got to pay them these crazy contracts so they don't leave it's like yeah, they might go somewhere and have some success, but right. we got to worry about like look uh, at Mookie. Team. Yeah, like you know what I mean. <laughs> Crushed to see Mookie go, but he went where you know, and now he went to L.A. and now he's just been he's been dominant ever since. So yeah, no, we just give big contracts to people that never played here before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. So, um, now I want to ask this: um, um, What are three things that everybody should know about you? Oh man, three things. Um, I'm a dad of an 11 year old son. Named Cam, Camden. He's the man. Love him to death. As much nice. as I want to, you know, as much as we all as parents want to uh, <laughs> ring their necks. Sometimes. Ring their neck. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I would. I would run through the wall. I would put him through. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah. Uh, so uh, that I uh, love softball. It's just like my outlet. Uh, a lot of people, you know, do therapy, do this, do that. When I'm in on that diamond, it, it's just nothing matters when I'm in between those two lines. You know what I mean? Um, and then. I'm a low-key Huey Lewis in the news fan. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. Uh, Dude, you don't need to be low-key about that. I, I know, I know. <laughs> I just feel like when I'm listening, it's like uh, every horrible 90s movie or 80s <laughs> movie like uh, intro yeah. or like background music or sub uh, soundtrack, I feel like that's Huey Lewis right there, and that's kind of like uh, kind of my guilty pleasure And when I'm scrolling through Spotify, you know what I mean? 
I love me some Huey Lewis right oh, now. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a big, uh, not as much over the years, but a big karaoke guy. Yes. So I started uh, experimenting okay. with power Go-to karaoke song. Well, my go-to is obviously, well, obviously, you, you don't know, but uh, <laughs> it's Michael Jackson, The Way You Make Me Feel, oh, or Bobby clutch. Brown, okay. uh, Every Little Step. Love that. I've been experimenting, though. Okay. Throwing in the Huey Lewis. Okay. Uh, you know, so... I do the power I like of love. That. Are you a, are you a fan of uh, Back to the Future? Uh, yeah, of course. So you of know, of course, yeah, the power of love, the, yeah, the nostalgia of that. Definitely, so. I actually did karaoke last night with my oh. buddy Tommy. Nice. Uh, we actually uh, went to um, we went to Patty Kelly's out in Peabody and did some karaoke. They do it on Monday and Wednesday. Oh, I so. love it. Yeah, it was fun. I did uh, Will Smith's Miami. I'm oh. not a singer. I'm more of a rapper. But the last time I did. Uh, I did um, I Want a New Drug by uh, okay. Huey Lewis in the News. So uh, love yeah. that. Little Stone Temple Pilots, too, something like that. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kara- uh, karaoke is a good time. Yeah, oh, always, yeah. always. And you always play that game, like, who's singing? I like yeah. to, you know, when, when you're trying to find out who's actually singing because it's all spread around the bar and stuff like that. Yeah, I like yeah. playing that game, you know what I mean? And then you look at them like... Came out of you, really? Okay, okay. <laughs> it's crazy though when you do go. Like, there's a new place in Nashua, Raj. It's an Indian food restaurant. Okay. Me and my buddy Kevin uh, Lin Linbaum. Uh, Kevin, I probably said your last name wrong. We went, <laughs> and uh, man, the people were impressive there. Oh yeah. I was like, awesome. man, I'm gonna get up there because I'm not known for being a great vocalist. Right, right, right. But uh, I know the words. Yes. And exactly. these people were knocking out of the park. Then Kevin goes up and goes, "I'll do tricky." Without words. <laughs> okay. Uh, Run DMC and he killed it. So I was That's like, what's you know, up. I like that. Uh, karaoke is a good time. Always. Um, now I got to ask this, sticking with the theme of the show, this is the a the, uh, million dollar question here that we ask every guest. Okay. Um, what does it mean to you to be an American? What's it mean for me to be an American? Um, I mean, it's in your name, freedom. Uh, you know what I mean? I get to wake up every morning and not have to worry about anything like that or um, anything that, you know, I can kind of do what I want. Democracy, um, everybody's being heard and stuff like that. Um, I look at kind of these other places and you know all, all these you know third world country. I feel I feel horrible. Some people can't get gas, like in Haiti. It, it, there's just gang fights on the street every day, and it just you know it, I'm proud to you know be an American because of all the you know freedom of speech and stuff like that. So um, I think that's a great answer. I think sometimes we get lost on those freedoms because you know I, I kept using this example the other day where these I don't know if you've been watching the World Cup uh, I've been dabbling yeah, I, yeah, watched yeah. More I play more US. FIFA yeah. on, PS, on PS4 than yeah. I do watch World <laughs> Cup but it's definitely kind of exciting I'd rather watch hockey but yeah but it, I looked at the Iran team and they protested in their first game they didn't want to sing the, their national anthem which I guess is a thing that they got to sing it okay um, because of a 22 year old woman that was killed by their moral police or whatever they call them they've now disbanded them and the players didn't want to sing their anthem they protested and after they did that they said we will prison put your families in prison we will kill your families I, things That's... like that um, where in this country, you know, we, we get mad when people protest, or not me, but there's people like, oh, they took a knee, they just wrecked the flag, go, isn't that something that makes our country great? It's what they want to do, yeah. you know, and uh, by all means, oh, sorry. About oh, that. Charlotte Flair took a spell. Sorry, sh- sorry. <laughs> Woo! Um, so, uh, it's just, oh, sh- where was I going to go with that? Um, Go ahead. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, I was just saying, like, we, we, we get, you know, we have people that get annoyed about protests, right? But it's, it's like part of what makes us great is that we can do that. Right. And your family's not going to be threatened because of it. Not by the government, at least. Right, right, right. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, it's just, it's crazy because, you know, I would love to, um, I would love to be able to, you know, go to, my sister actually goes to Haiti and, and okay. all those, she's in dental. Uh, she's a, um, a dental assistant. Sorry, sis, if I got that wrong. <laughs> um, uh, and she goes and helps, you know, with all the, you know, all the dental care and stuff like that. And I really commend her for that. Um, but again, it's like with all, like you can do what you want. You can take a knee. You, you can have your own opinion. Um, we just got to remember that there are, are people fighting for this country. And you know what I mean? And I shout out to you guys. Thank you for everybody that served. Um, they, they make it what we are today. So No, definitely. And we... we Shows big supporter of the military and everything like that, and they fight for us to be able to to, to do, do these that, things. Exactly, you know? they fought for you to be able to take your knee if you wanted to, or not, or have your 
you know, opinions and, and stuff like that and, and feelings and, and, and all that. So. And that's the thing, too. If you take a knee, you're against taking a knee or whatever protest it is, you're not thrown in jail for having that opinion. Exactly. Yeah. Or not tortured or yeah. your family's Or your family's not threatened, you know. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, yeah, I want to get into this. You work in the cannabis field. Yeah. Um, How'd you end up getting into that? Um, so I was actually going to, uh, my mom's a nurse and I was going to kind of so much follow in her footsteps. Um, I worked in the OR um, before and I had, a, you know, my bedside manner is, is, is like my mom's and I just liked taking care of people, making sure they were okay. Um, and back in high school, I was always like, hey, there's gonna be stores that you can walk in that you can buy cannabis. <laughs> and everybody looked at me, I graduated in 04. Everybody yeah. looked at me like I was crazy. And I was like, I'm telling you right now, there's gonna be stores you can buy, you can walk in and it's gonna be like a liquor store. Um, and then once they started opening, um, I realized that I could take um, the cannabis plant and utilize that by taking care of patients as well. Um, so I, as soon as I heard that there was a uh, medical dispensary opening in my area, I immediately wanted to get in there. I already knew the product. Um, I already knew uh, the benefits of the cannabis plant, uh, and I already wanted to help patients. And at that point, it wasn't recreational. Um, it was more. Uh, it was all um, medical. Uh, so people having their card, they were, you know, you would have the older people coming in with glaucoma and stuff like that. Like people <coughs> that actually need the cannabis plant um, to go about their everyday lives. Um, not just some stoner that wants to go in there and get <laughs> yeah. high. So um, that's kind of where I, I strive and I focus on the most is more of the education of um, the educational and the science standpoint um, rather than just the recreational standpoint. So No, no, totally understand. I, grew, I graduated in 03, so it was about a year ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And I, if you would have said that to me then, I, I probably wouldn't have believed it either. Because yeah. I remember just thinking like, and I always had it in my head now, Truth be told, the first time I ever smoked marijuana, we're saying this right on the show, <laughs> uh, I think I was 16, yeah. right? And and uh, just thinking like, man, alcohol is legal, but this isn't. And But it was always in my head, like, why? So put a group of people yeah. in a room, right? Give them each a fifth of vodka, something's going to happen. You give them each a, a joint what's gonna happen, they're probably all just gonna sit there and laugh at each other yeah, or something yeah. like that. Like, you know what I mean? That's why I was with you on that. Like, why is alcohol legal, but, you know, cannabis or marijuana isn't? Um, it was just, it was crazy to me. It, it never made a lot of sense to me. The only thing I could think of is that you can test for, and I don't know how you test for marijuana, like say you pulled someone over, but a, an officer could tell if someone's impaired, whether so, it's yeah, alcohol I mean, or marijuana. I mean, you could you know? smell it if, I mean, yeah, your car may, if you smoke in your car a lot, which you're yeah. not supposed to do, I'm not condoning it. Um, you, you, yeah, your, your car is going to reek over time. But I mean, it, when you get pulled over, yeah, you got your eyes are red. You're, you, you're still going to fail a sobriety test because you're not yeah. technically sober. doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you use your sobriety test. They all think, oh, well, but I'm not drunk, but I'm not drunk. Yeah, but you're impaired. It's the yeah. same. It's the same thing. You know what I mean? You may not be able to walk that line when you're high or something like that. So, um, but yeah, I just, it, it's definitely, um, you know, taking a, t you know, let's, how do I put this? It's, it's helped me cope with a lot of things just in, in life, you know, what <coughs> I mean? instead of, you know, um, everybody, you know, has some sort of, you know, seasonal depression and stuff yep. like that, or just depression in general, anxiety, social anxiety, stuff like that. And we just really just relaxes you. Um, some people, yeah, it gets you a little, you know, um, paranoid and stuff like that. Um, my best advice for that is take some CBD, straight CBD will kind of balance you out and kind of bring you down to, and just think, you know, this is just, because a lot of people, you get those scary stories yeah. of the people with the edibles, you know what I mean? Uh, calling, oh, I don't know, I think I'm going to die, I think yeah. I'm going to die. <laughs> um, just, just calm down, just take a deep breath, everything's going to be okay. So. Yeah, no, no. Now, what is, uh, in this field, what does your day-to-day -day look like? Um, so my day-to-day -day when I was in the dispensary um, was, you know, <coughs> go in, open the store just like any other retail store. Uh, you got your cash registers and stuff like that, so you get focused on that. Um, but then once the first uh, customer or, you know, patient comes in, uh, it's all eyes on them. It's, I'm here to help you. I'm not trying to um, sell you something just so you can get out of the store. I'm trying to listen to what, you know, you need and what mood you're trying to achieve by smoking or ingesting or however your, you know, um, delivery method is. Um, so, you know, just a transaction could go anywhere from 
10 minutes to, to a half hour. I've spent 45 minutes with somebody just because it's their first time. You see them kind of nervous. <laughs> like I had one person that, so the <coughs> cop's going to pull me over as soon as I leave here. What's the, what's the trick here? You know what I mean? Um, and it's just, I just love to, you know, you're putting something in your body at the end of the day that is going to alter your state of mind or your, your mood or something like that. So I just want to make sure, you know, everything that you're going to be doing or everything that you're going to be purchasing is, you know, not going to make you tweak out. Maybe, you know, I want to make sure I can get you exactly the mood you're trying to achieve. So, um, you know, and just helping them, um, stocking the sales floor, stuff like that. Um, I've done a, a lot of inventory work as well, back of house. Um, and so now I'm on to um, sales. So I'll be on the road um, going. My territory is the western part of the state and the northern part of the state of Massachusetts. So I'll just be going to different <coughs> dispensaries, preaching about our product, um, telling everybody how amazing it is because it is. It's the, probably the cleanest I've seen for concentrates. They have a nice big 10. Um, 10,000 or 100,000 square it's all outdoors can't remember the exact measurements but it's I've seen it and it's huge it's all an outdoor grow um, and they you know I'll be going to those different dispensaries having pop-ups uh, you know spreading knowledge about the company to the bud tenders so they can help sell the product and to the people that are coming into the store so we'll have like a little table set up okay. you know just kind of do almost like business to business sales. Um, but I have grown a pretty good um, network in the North Shore, which I'm going to help, you know, pump our product through uh, and get our get our name out there. So nice, nice. That'll yeah. be fun. Being on the road's got to be that's got to be fun. Yeah, yeah, you know, just yeah. seeing different people every day. You know, yeah. I, uh, some people can do the office thing. I've done the office thing. I like it. It's peaceful. Um, but being on the road, seeing different people every day, interacting. I used to work in the mall. Like yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> I used to work at the kiosks in the mall, oh, really? trying yeah, to get yeah. yeah for ghost armor. It's like yeah. a zag invisible shield. So yeah. I just I'm used to seeing <laughs> just a bunch of people all day, every day, different people, even you know not having to see the same people. Um, so yeah, I'd just be going around to different dispensaries, you know, um, spreading the spreading the good name. So awesome, awesome. No, it sounds good. Um, now, what are some of the benefits to using cannabis? Um, it, for me, I can kind of only speak for me because everybody's body's different. Everybody uses for uses cannabis for a different reason. Um, I use a product. It's uh, full spectrum CBD, so it's not so much. Um, the THC part of the cannabis plant. I always refer to the THC kind of the Cheech and Chong, yeah. and the CBD kind of that clear headed. Yeah. Um, and so I use a CBD salve uh, that a company called High Maintenance Products make, uh, and it, it's a topical. So it's going. It's not going to kind of make me feel high because a it's CBD, but it's just going to work in that one uh, location that I put it on. So I use it before and after all my tournaments, okay. stuff like that. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's like the icy hot without that, you know, Ben Gay kind of smell, or, <laughs> yeah. you know, that, that wretched smell that we all hate. Um, I don't have to smell like a, you know, uh, an old person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I use, I use the CBD for that. Um, and then just, you know, I can get, I know it might seem a little odd, but because you've seen me on the field, but I can get quiet. I can get, you know, a little to myself, but the cannabis just helps kind of bring that level of you know um socialness up for me um anxiety you know everybody gets anxious over certain things sometimes i feel like it's cat williams said it best <laughs> it's just you know oh okay all right now i can just relax doesn't necessarily numb me like you know like those hard opiates um, yep. numb and stuff like that but um it definitely helps me cope with that so um and then you know just on those rainy days where you just kind of don't feel like getting out of bed, kind of <laughs> you smoke a TV, you're ready to run a marathon. You yeah. know what I mean? You're ready to go. Helps you, you know, clean the house and stuff like that. Do your everyday chores. So um, it's definitely something that I use. Uh, I use daily, and it just helps me without being, you know, prescribed to any opiates or anything like that. Yeah, I mean um, that's that's the whole thing. There's no. I don't think there's any link. Too, yeah. I think there's no link that it's your body becomes physically dependent on it. Like yeah, no, I mean, I could too. stop. I've stopped for two months yeah. to get a job, you know what I mean? And I was selling cars and I had to pass a drug test. Yeah. So 
I have to do what I have to do. It yeah. may be a little bit irritable, but who isn't irritable after yeah. smoking cigarettes or, you know what I mean, any anything like that. But it's just... Uh, you're not throwing up. You're not, you're not thro- detoxing. It's not you're a not, detox. Yeah. It's more of a, you know, you, you may <coughs> get to the physical aspect of, you know, some people that smoke joints or something like that. Yeah, that, that smoking thing. Yeah. But it's not, like you said, you're not detoxing. You're not sweating. You're not... Or anything like that. It's something that, you know, I could pick up and put down. Do I want to? No. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just, it does make, you know, it makes everyday life livable. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's, it, it makes you happy. It makes you, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. So um, I'm definitely, definitely happy for it. <laughs> it <laughs> gives s- me a job too. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's my follow-up Helps question. What, what would you say to someone that wants to get into that field? Do it. Um, it is uh, get in wherever you can, whether it's a, a, a company looking for a trim tech, um, anything, just get into it. It's, it's not going anywhere. This, this industry is growing, no pun intended. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it, and it's amazing. It's an amazing industry too. Um, it's just, there's so much money in it. Um, so much room to grow with companies. Um, I would say if you're thinking about it, if you have the opportunity, do it. Um, if it's not your thing, it's not your thing, but I know plenty of people I've worked with that trim weed. I've worked, uh, when I worked at Ocean Breeze Cultivators, we had a trim department and there was about six or seven people in the department and three, three of them didn't smoke at all whatsoever, but they're trimming and and everything like that. Like you don't have to smoke to work in the industry, you don't, you and vice versa, but, um, do it because it's definitely, you're always going to have a job. There's going to be tons of, of dispensaries popping up every day. So, All right. Awesome. Awesome. Now, I want to talk about this because a lot of people are going to be curious about this. You play a lot of softball. Yes. Um, how did you get into playing softball? So I was a baseball player, um, and it was I was 18, and there's no more baseball to be played after senior Babe Ruth, really, um, unless you're playing college or anything like that. Um, and I took a year off from college, so when I came back, I started coaching um, Babe Ruth, and I was like, all my buddies were like, "Yeah, we're gonna play softball." I was like, "Wait, this soft like this this a, that's a thing like guys yeah. play softball like are we kidding like yeah. I want that like let's go," and um, so I was at the cages one day. I was uh, I was like twenty, and I was at the cages just hitting baseballs, and a person uh, his name's John Silk, I. He used to coach me at Mike Giardi. I don't know if you know the name Mike Giardi. He used to play for uh, he used to play for the Yankees and yeah yeah and yeah, yeah. So uh, he actually coached a clinic at in, at Salem High, uh, Salem Mass, and um, it would he coached Silky coached me, and I saw him. Now I'm so it was like I went there from when I was uh, I want to say like ten or eight to like thirteen fourteen. And then I saw Silky years later at the cages and I'm just sitting there, you know, I still got my swing and everything like that. And he was like, Hey, you want to play some softball? And I was like, I've been waiting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's go. So, uh, I showed up and it was modified. So now I'm coming from baseball where it's coming overhand, obviously. And but modified is a lot different because you basically, it's like a bowling motion. You can't like break your back. It's not that when, you know, windmill or anything like that. Um, but there's some guys that can huck it, man. Oh, yeah. And it's crazy. Just that single, just that one motion there. And um, it was as close as to baseball as I could get. And I was just like, yeah, let's do this. Um, and then uh, a couple of years later, slow pitch uh, was introduced. And I was just like, all right, I think I like this. Like, <laughs> it's just, here we go, come and get it. And, you know, it's it, you rely more on defense and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, and ever since then, I just, I was playing back when I was like 24, 20, you know, 23, I was playing on six, seven teams, you know, <laughs> throughout different cities and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, and now I've kind of slowed down a little bit, kind of put my focus into, you know, some other leagues. Um, so I'm only on like four. <laughs> but, <Yeah>. only. <laughs> only, but, and then your, your random indoor, you know, pickup travel turn, yeah. uh, not travel turnies, but the, uh, the overnights and stuff like that. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, man, and, and I'm grateful for it. Like I said before, it's just my outlet. You know what I mean? I could have the worst day and then I know I'm playing softball and I just sit there and yeah, I know after the game, I'm still going to have to go back to that worst. Like yeah. it's only an hour or it's only, but legit for that hour, hour and a half, I'm only thinking softball and it's just a nice little escape. So, yeah. um, but yeah, I've been playing U-Trip for about 
this will be my fourth year coming up. I got into it late. I didn't I didn't know that there was like this traveling, like serious softball kind of community and stuff like that. Um, so I really wish I did get into U trip earlier. Um, but I'm you know I'm happy where I'm at. I love I love the sport and uh, I, I'm gonna play till my till the wheels fall off. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with you there. I've I've noticed the expansion. It's it's, it's funny that you bring up. You know, that you were t I was 20 when I got into it, but I, I, I started playing in Plymouth State. But I remember as a kid when playing baseball, I grew up by Greeley Park in Nashua. Okay. And there'd always be these big dudes playing softball down there. And I remember as a kid being like, <laughs> playing softball? Right. I'm like, what a is girl like, sport? I was like, I, I was like, this can't be real. Right, right. You know, I was like, you play baseball. And, and, and that's, that's, exactly, you know. that's exactly my thought, too. But then the first time I got asked to play, when I got to Plymouth, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah let's do this. Let's, I'm let's do this. I'm, a, I'm over that now. I don't want to go back to baseball. And the one time I did go back, it was scary. Yeah, my buddy plays <laughs> uh, for the North Shore Giants, and I'm like, guys, I don't know. I mean, I went into the cages just messing around in extra innings when they still had the coin feed, and I went in at like 70 miles an hour baseball, and I was just like, uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I was like, let's, uh, let's not do that again. But, uh, yeah, I don't know how they go. And to be able to play baseball and softball in the same season, like, yeah, it's going back and it. forth. I could, I had to stop playing modified. As much as I did love it, I had to stop playing it because I was playing more slow pitch. Yeah. And it was messing with my swing both ways. It was messing my modified pitch was, I mean, my modified swing was getting messed up for my U-trip swing and vice versa. And it was just, I was like, I had to pick one. And I was doing more traveling and, and I liked the, uh, the U-trip more. So that's where I stuck with. Yeah, no, U trips always been uh, a lot of fun, and, and like you, I, I found, but I found a lot of the leagues. We've seen such an expansion of tournament style softball in this area oh, yeah. over the last, even since 2016. It's crazy. Yeah, because I know we had a couple teams go to Worlds and win, and then everybody wanted to do it. Yeah, <laughs> was that uh, Bad Beat? Bad Beat won, and right? then Newco won co-ed. Right, that's right. So that's right. there was tournament teams, but it wasn't like it is now. And then they won. And then the next up, everybody's like, I gotta, I want to go. I want, I want to throw a team in. I want to, yeah, yeah. And now it's like every year, there's more and more. You know, I know it dips. Yeah, but of it's course. like, like look at D's this year. There was yeah. a lot of D teams this year, um, this past year, I should say. Yeah, uh, tons of D teams. There was even more E teams in New Hampshire than I thought there was going to be, because everybody's like, oh yeah, this team moved, this team moved, and then right, right. they're replenishing. Definitely. You know? Yeah, so. teams are in every year. You know, you get the teams that break up and 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 kind of go their own way or stuff like that and then you do have you know there are some teams that stay loyal to their to their core and stuff like that but uh, we'll see what happens yeah it's definitely interesting for sure um what are, uh what's the major difference now we are we know it's the pitching style and modify and slow pitch yeah we're gonna say that's probably the main thing is there any other differences between the two um i would say you can bunt uh, oh really yeah and some modifieds i the, the <laughs> i'm sitting there and i'm watching some high or not um some live on uh, MJS when they went to I believe it was either Canaan or something like that and the third baseman was like where the pitcher was at and I'm just like what is going on like how crazy do you have to be to play third base yeah. like and it was just like and the dude laid down a bunt and I was just like oh you can bunt I was yeah. like oh okay that's I didn't yeah. know that um, so I mean bunting stealing if they uh, I know in some modified leagues that I played in if the catcher fields it clean you can't go, but if they oh, bobble really? it in any way or if it gets past them, you can go. Um, so I would say that. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's pretty much softball, softball. You know, what I mean? softball is softball. So it's like um, the rules are all the same. Uh, I know they play ten man, so I don't know, you know, if there is an eleventh in their lineup or if they just have to stick to ten people in the, you know, in the lineup. I don't know if they get an extra hitter. or designated hitter or something like that yeah, yeah. or if they're designated hitters like base it's like baseball where their designated hitter can hit for the pitcher yeah and and still have you know so um but that's yeah other than the pitching i mean that's pretty much that's it pretty much the big yeah one. i guess uh you trip in usa are kind of where they're yeah, different yeah, and just yeah. the heights and i don't and even bats know. and yeah so like, I, you know from what i've told it's six to twelve in usa yeah. um and you know three to ten for you trip and then the bats. I mean, I don't even know the difference from an, like an anarchy, um, you know, U trip bat that has a stamp to a, a USA stamp. Like they all sound the same. I, like, I, I don't, don't get even. It. You know, I, I never know. What this, I, I've never really paid attention to the in, in almost 18 years of playing. I've never really known. If I see a pitch and I can hit it, I just hit it. That's right. pretty much it. It's just know? where it is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 
and, and the comes in underhand. <laughs> as far as the bats, yeah, I don't, you know, because now, you know, that's been the big controversy. Is U trip is I don't even know. I don't even know what they've called it or, it, or what it is. Or uh, it's tough. Some it, people like they are into the bats though. Holy so yeah, crap. you have they they could open their own bat store. Like yeah. I've seen these posts on Facebook, and it's it's actually kind of crazy. Um, but it's just like some people collect bats, some people collect shoes, some people, you know what I mean? They they have their they have their thing, they have their vice, and um, and these bats can go for absurd amounts yeah. of money. I don't know who like it's not like Pawn Stars where the guy can go ask a ask his friend like for <laughs> for yeah. help. It's like how do you come across this price like? I, I've seen bats for 400, 500 new and wrapper. I'm like, how, how the, yeah. like, how do you price that? Like, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I, I, but I've also seen people win these bat raffles like five times. And they go, oh, like, yeah. geez, how does that? Well, happen? when they put in probably like eight entries out yeah. of 10, they're going to win anyway. But yeah, it's just crazy. But <laughs> shout out to Greg Kelly. But no, no I'm just kidding. All, all of them. He's yeah. probably, he's probably the luckiest out of them all. <laughs> but then again, he probably plays more than anybody there. So. I, I mean, Greg likes his bats. I know, oh, yeah. I know he's a big bat guy. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, what are some of your favorite moments playing the game? Um, obviously, winning trophies is, is a great, um, is a great, feeling or great memory um but my probably favorite is just the people that you meet while you're playing and the memories you make with them um i've you know when i started i played for sandlot and um you know i was introduced to a bunch of uh, a bunch of good people um and then that sp sprouted off of that i met their people and it just you know, I kind of hang out with the softball community in New Hampshire more than almost my friends <laughs> back at home. Like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? The people I grew up with and, and stuff like that. It's just, um, I, I'm really thankful. And that's probably like one of my one of my best memories is just being able to make more memories with people that I've met through softball. Because um, we're all there for the same thing. We're all there to have fun, just play the game. And you know what I mean? Try to keep it as drama free as possible. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that's that's kind of the main goal, right? Um, but just ah, my fondest memory. Hmm. I would, I would have to say, um, my first, my first home run, I guess. I don't know. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go chicks dig the long ball type yeah, thing. Yeah. Uh, it's just cause you know, I'm a bigger guy, but I'm more of a singles hitter. Like I just, I just want to get on and I, yeah, it, I, anybody can blow it out of that dump or something like that, but yeah. it's at the same, it's like, it takes like. I would say it takes a goat to be able to hit wherever the, wherever the heck you want. You know what I mean? So um, that's kind of what I try to focus on. But I guess like my first like U trip home run, um, it was it was a grand slam. So it was kind of right. yeah. You know what I mean? It was definitely kind of memorable. So um, I would say I would say that. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I I'll be honest. When I first because uh, for years like I went from college, and then the first thing I ever found out of college was. It, it was any New Hampshire Sports Social Club then. Okay. Now it's My Social Sports. My okay, I've heard of them. Yeah. I was like, you Google that's what you found, and we were always playing. I guess it was ASA, these bats that doesn't do anything. Right. So then I we get I get asked to play on this U Trip Men's Team, which is the league I play in Nashua now, and I hit like I get in there with a 30 ounce U Trip bat, and I smash this home run. And I go 30 ounces. I was like, <laughs> wait. <laughs> I was like, I think I like this. This is much better. Way better. I was like, you know, yeah. obviously I'm not a home run guy anymore, but back then, I, I said, right, right. you know, a lot. But no, it's just funny how you said that. Um, I got to ask this. You've now been selected, you said, a two-time Challenge Cup. Yeah, uh, so I was selected last year and was selected this year again. Very honored and, uh, and appreciative for that. Um, put a little, you know, we all put in the hard work during the season and the off season and, you know, stuff like that. It's just, it's... It's great to be recognized for that. Can you so. tell the, the audience that might not know what exactly is it? Uh, so Challenge Cup is basically you have your classes uh, E, D, all the way up to A and majors and stuff like that. And from those classes, uh, a team gets selected um, through the team. So you, it, it's basically where you live. So okay. even though I played um, last year, I played for GS Get Smoked. They're a New Hampshire team. However, I live in Massachusetts. Um, so I was um, selected to represent Massachusetts. Okay. Um, and, you know, uh, the committee uh, of each of the, you know, U-Trip Mass gets together with who they deem the head coach. And, you know, they put together a team of people that they feel are going to represent the state to the fullest. Um, and I've been lucky enough to be chosen twice. So uh, I, it's, it's an honor. And that's pretty much... Uh, 
it, it's crazy because you get to go down to Florida, you know, just coming back from Worlds, and you just experience that, and then you you go back a couple months later, and it's just like oh, I'm back, yeah. like you know, and um, you build you build a certain chemistry with that team. You try to get in as many practices as you can and stuff like that, um, and and it, it's a great experience. Um, you you know you're out there representing your state. Every there's tons of teams in there. You get to play. That's what I like. Uh, I remember. I think it was the Sierra Worlds, the pint, and oh, why can't I remember? Rosenbagas yeah. flew all the way to Florida to play each other in the first round of I Worlds. I couldn't believe that. Yeah. Uh, no, like yeah. please, I will. I will not show up. Like yeah. I don't want to travel thirteen hundred miles to they play somebody. Each other I, the and they played week. the previous week. I was just yeah. gonna say that. Yeah. So. Um, I just like seeing, you know, because you can learn from everybody, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. like there are teams out there, especially like the Amish, that just hammer the ball. Yeah, that's... Hammer, and it's just I'm trying to, I, I'm not even worried. I'm trying to look at his swing, seeing what he's doing, or, you know, <laughs> asking him at first base if they get on first base. You know, how'd you hit that thing? Like, give me some pointers. Yeah. Like, you know, being that, you know, so it's just being able to see people play from all around the U.S. Uh, and even Canada and stuff like that is pretty dope. No, it's very cool. And, and if people don't believe it, the, the Amish can play. Oh, they man. can play. They uh, can play. <laughs> and they're fast. And it's just, I'll never forget, there was a, there was a, a refer, uh, umpire, sorry, and he said to us, I bet their slowest guy will beat your fastest guy. And Kevin Smith stepped up and was like, what was that? And I was just like, yeah. Fast. I, who was yeah. very, very fast. And I was just like, yeah. Maybe on the other, any other team here, but you kind of said it's wrong because we got one really fast guy. Yeah. But I see what point you're trying to prove, Red. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? But wrong team because we got Kev. He's he's the fastest man alive. So, yeah. uh, but these guys, you know, they hit the Amish. They just hit on a line, and it's like they can choose to, when they want to hit their home run. They didn't hit a single home run against us. They were beating us, and they were two runs away from the mercy rule. There was one man on, and the guy was like, "All right." boom the game over like they can okay i'll hit it now fine and it's just like dude really it's just like wild come on and it's just yeah. everything's a, a line drive and they're on they're going two out the box every single time doesn't matter where that ball is they're going two out the box too too funny too funny they love their softball for sure oh yeah um i want to get in the fan questions some shout sure. outs uh jose torres cologne had kind of an in we want to make sure that the questions, guys, are appropriate for the show. We are a family show. He's such a um, pizza and a poop emoji. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Jake Venuti wants to know, ask him uh, <laughs> if I'm the real Lou uh, Sabano. Oh, man, Jake Venuti. What's up, bud? Are you smiling or anything? Um, that kid probably, you couldn't pay him to smile. He, he never smiles. <laughs> but uh, so <laughs> there was a game uh, in the Peabody League. And I had stepped back uh, from the team just because of, you know, controversy with another player. And uh, <laughs> they were playing. I went down to watch the game. And Venuti was actually supposed to be taking my spot. So Venuti was wearing my jersey oh, okay. and playing. And they were playing the team. Like I don't know if you remember, but I said my friends back home, I spend more time with my New Hampshire boys. Um, so it's the team from back home that they're playing and Jake gets up with the Silvano jersey and I'm standing behind the dugout and my buddy Ian goes, you're not Lou Silvano. Yeah. I know Lou Silvano. He goes, I'm Lou Silvano. He goes, that's Lou Silvano. And he points at me yeah. and he's like, yeah. And he ended up going uh, four for four with four home runs, ended up basically single-handedly beating the team of all my boys. <laughs> so he's like, I'm the real Lou Silvano now. And I was like, all right, all right, all right. You win, you win. That's too funny. Shout out to Jake Venuti. <laughs> Smile a little bit more, Jake. Yeah, he's a good ball player. Oh, he's a phenomenal ball. He's also chosen for Challenge Cup as well. Well okay. deserved. Um, definitely shout out to him. Uh, Mikey Mullen wants to know, and again, Mikey, we want to keep these <laughs> yeah. appropriate. So we're just going to ask this: What uh, do you have a favorite bird? No, I don't. He's okay. just he's just making up stuff. You know. Trying to be inappropriate. It's okay. It's it's again a family show. <laughs> it's here. a family show. That's what yeah. you get. I mean, <laughs> hey, if there's any other podcast that you do or anything like that, yeah. I know it's a TV show. If you ever do a podcast, uh, we'll go on the podcast. We can talk about <laughs> all these things. Yeah. yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, Hannah Vega wants to know because we did promote this, and we're going to ask you this in a little bit. But yeah. uh, you like reality TV? What's Dude. your favorite uh, reality uh, show? Right now, I mean, obviously, <coughs> classic Jersey Shore. 
I mean, you can't okay. go wrong with Jersey Shore. It is just, you sit at home and you're like, huh, wow. They're like, old now, too. They're so, very, yeah. but I still kind of keep up to date with them. Like, they're still doing Playing shows. Too, yeah, so, yeah. We're still, <laughs> we're right all around the same age. They're, yeah. they're pretty, pretty much the same age as us, maybe a couple years older. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, they're just, to be honest, the, the connect that they still have, the connection that they still have as, like, yeah, I know the TV is what brought them and yeah. their TV is kind of keeping them there, but they're still, like, they're legit a family now. Like, they, they, they talk every day and stuff like that. Like, that's crazy to me. Um, but if I was going to do, like, a reality, like, competition show, is it cake? is actually really cool. Okay. Um, they make things and you gotta, they make, like, a, a shoe and a cake that looks like a shoe. And they got, the people got to guess and, you know, the, whoever made it goes on to the next round and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm a sucker for those, you know, the reality kind of competition <laughs> shows. Um, and also like those dating shows and, and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I just, I just like to sit, sit at home and kind of, kind of laugh at them. They do some crazy stuff. They're all wild. Tons of, you know, beautiful people on the show. So it, it's, it's kind of easy to watch. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, there was some co in the comment sections. We had Nick Flanders, Ben Flanders, yeah, Graham shout Laporte out to them, love on. them. Uh, Daniel Joseph wants to know, ask Lou about P ninety P ninety X. Do yeah. you guys you remember P ninety X? Is this a uh, video it was like game that system? workout? Oh no, it was, it was that okay. workout thing that was like crazy. It was like yeah. ninety days, and everybody wanted to do it. Yeah. So like, yeah, I, I did it for for a day. Yeah, and that was it. <laughs> so he's uh, he's basically trying to bash my commitments, uh, my my commitment uh, regime there. It, 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 so you put on the DVD and then you oh yeah, and then you work out, out okay. and it's just supposed to be like after the first day I was dead. I was like, this is torture. I was like, I'm good. <laughs> like I, I, I'm okay. I'll, I'll stick with the dad bod. I, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we had a trash can picture for Maddie Heber. Oh man, that's funny. Love you, Maddie. Um, so we just have an ongoing inside joke. Um, just calling each other just trash, kind of just joking around about it to the point where we, anytime we see each other at the field, we look around for a trash can to bring and just sit right next to him okay. and just go hop in or just something like yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we've taken it to, he's sending me memes, these, everything. Every, anytime he tries to, you know, put out a post or something, you'll just see me comment the trash can emoji. <laughs> He'll love it or do the care thing or, you know, it's just gotta love it again and on the another person i met through the softball community that you know it's just it's 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 crazy um what what softball the game of softball can actually do oh, so i understand agree it's crazy that you know for, when i really look at it, i'm like man all my friends are that's from softball my closest friends are now from softball i'm like when did that happen? that's what i'm saying you man know? it's crazy it, your whole you know facebook feed is yeah. predominantly softball people yeah, you know what i mean it's, um, it's a big community it, yeah and Lindsey yeah. Drew throwing shade on the uh, on all the E players, you know. Oh I mean? God, I had to. No offense, Lindsey, I had to unfollow her years ago. <laughs> though, before I think she had the shtick going. Yeah. Um, I I don't. Like, I think it's comical because yeah. I mean, obviously, she I, might have a little niche think. there of like you know, J Rose taking softball to another level of a podcast, right? Yeah. yeah. She might have the comedy aspect of it. Yeah, she could be a, a, com a stand-up comedian. Could, it, just softball could be a reality softball show. Softball players. That's a reality. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. I can't believe the bench me that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just walking around flipping stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, this is this is garbage. Yeah, too funny. But uh, I want to get in top fives. I want to get in buy or sell. We got we got a little bit of time left. Okay. Um, right now, we'll go through this quick. If you had to pick a top five e players uh, in New Hampshire right now, who would you go with? <sighs> That's you're putting me on the spot, man. Um, well, number one, I mean everybody knows it. Uh, I mean he plays he plays his heart out from inning from the first inning to the last and he is probably the dirtiest player like like by the end of the actual game dirt. actual yeah. dirtiest <laughs> player I've ever seen it's got to go to Silas Murray yeah he's well and we're talking um this previous year because now you know Jobin has been he's has gonna need to be promoted bump. yeah yeah he definitely got the bump um for you no know, so now Jobin playing D's um so if we were going you know last year Sorry, no, that's right. um and then I know he's not from I know he's not from New Hampshire, but he plays on, you know, he played for Get Smoked last year, Emilio Ramos. Okay. He's, he's, I know he's had his injury, but he's better with, you know, at 50% than I think I'll ever be at 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, just, you know, phenomenal ball player. Um, he's probably the only person I can appreciate or, or I can allow, <laughs> not saying that, but um, 
to swing on a three one or first pitch or something like that. Like, you know, you, you kinda you never want to swing on three one. You gotta let the pitcher come back twice, you know, but he can swing whenever the heck he wants. He he's gonna put that ball in play. He's gonna hit that ball hard. He's he's a phenomenal and he's a lefty too. Um, <laughs> uh, Caven Harris, probably I would say from from Wolfpack. He probably needs a promotion. Uh, he's dead. Yeah, yeah. they. Uh, I don't know if they got the bump, but I think they are gonna play D's anyway. Okay. Um, but yeah, like I would always joke with uh, with him. You know, I see a little sand coming out of your back pocket there, sandbagger. Yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> uh, stuff like that. Um, shoot, I don't even know. Um, I would say. I would say um, Jake Landry from Narwhals. He first baseman hammers the ball, absolutely hammers Jake's the ball. Jake's a good ball player. Great yeah. ball player um, from what I've seen. Uh, absolutely hammers the ball. Um, I know that's four. I mean, maybe and Stokes too. Um, well, it's crazy you're bringing up three names. You said Stokes. You said Landry. You said Silas. These are northern New Hampshire guys. Yeah. That's showing, like, how this it's expanding in the state. Right, right, definitely. Because no one ever, like, for years, no one's ever mentioned anybody from up, up, up there. Right, right, right. You know? So that Franklin League is, we've had Kyle and the Kyle Kaplan on the show. They're finding some talented players that are coming down here. Right, right, right. That no one even knew existed. That's awesome. You know? Yeah, I'm a, I mean, I'm a big mass guy, too. So, like, if you ask me kind of these same questions in mass, I'd probably have different, pe obviously different people. Um... But yeah, it's it's definitely good that the the northern part of the state's getting that exposure. Yeah, we're starting to see like like we've said this on the show like it's 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 growing in the state. When people think softball's dying, they're wrong. Uh, yeah. yeah, you might see a few leagues that have dipped, but that doesn't mean like throughout it's, the state it's it hasn't. It's right. grown. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, for the sake of time, do you have a number one D player in the area? Oh, uh, number one. I mean, <sighs> Brendan Laporte is is unreal. Hits the ball a mile, and you know what I mean. Um, even even Riley Elliott, he he's a he's a nasty ball player as well. Um, but I mean, those would probably be my top two there. And those guys are gonna be around. for Daniel years Kamara to too. Can't Kim, forget yeah. about Kamara. He's 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 a force to be reckoned with. Um, yeah. So I mean, those would probably be my top three. Okay. All right. Uh, top reality shows that you're, uh, you're yeah. into. So. Um, obviously we said Jersey Shore, but I was, I was, so I'm a little torn. Um, I know it's not reality, but if you haven't seen it, see Wednesday. Okay. The, the people keep saying this. When, yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. see Wednesday. It's that good. Cause I Watch hate the it. Adams family. So I think, she, yeah. I think, I think it's Jana or Gianna or whatever, Ortega. Yeah. She was in Scream 5. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I saw that too. Um, it was all right. I just love Scream. Um, yeah, right. Scream's the best. <laughs> Scream is the best. I just hate when they drag it out too. Yeah, yeah. Um, she played, I mean, Christina Ricci obviously killed that role, yeah. uh, you know, when we were younger. But she dominated this role. She, it was, she killed it. Unreal. Um, so I would say, for reality though, I would say, um, Are You the One is, is probably my favorite because they, you have to pick a person that they, that the, TV show pick for you. There's 11 people, uh, 11 girls, 11 guys. You have to pick the one person that the show picked for you. And oh you sit at the end of the show and the lights, beams of light light up if you get the match. So people try to do the strategy thing, like, you know, oh, well, it wasn't this person. Then other people try to, oh, but I feel more connected with this person. <laughs> Dude, it is hysterical. There's just so much drama, stuff like that. Um, Too Hot to Handle is pretty cool. They actually just came out with a new, uh, a new season. Um, it's where they can't do anything. They can't hook up. They can't do anything like that. They're said to be brought for like a party island, like a love island or something like that. Um, but <laughs> if they, they have a pot at the end of the show, it's like $100,000. But if they do anything that goes against the rules, money comes out. And I've seen uh, seasons where they go down to like zero dollars in the whole entire pot because everybody's just hooking up. It's, yeah, I did not. It's, you hundred thousand. I would can't chastity belt. Yeah. I would be like, this is a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Like, stay away from me. Yeah. Like, um, but yeah. So and then you know, I kind of think it's a little kooky, but I I don't know even if I would go on it, I probably would. But Love Is Blind, where you don't even see like the person, you're just oh, sitting boy. in the pod. I just. I just like, again, the drama, just all that stuff. Like, yeah. I just kind of love sitting at home being like, I'm so glad I'm not a part of this. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, um, and then I think that, I think that would be, 
that would be pretty much it. Okay. Uh, I'm not really into that Big Brother Survivor. Like, yeah, that's cool. Don't get me wrong, but bring me the drama. Bring me, bring me the uh, the hot girls stuff like that. No, I'd fair. rather watch that. You know what I mean? Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I've never. I used. To, I grew up on the Real World, like the original yes. first grade. I like the Real World. I was too. watching that, and I do feel I've said this on the show because I've I've watched some of the reunion, and I go, man, this actually shaped like how I believe like. I didn't know gay people growing up, but I watched the real world. Right. I didn't know that many people. I knew some, but not that many people of color. I did because the real world. Right. It's crazy how that was like, and I'm watching that in like first grade. I don't know how that even happened. Right. <laughs> but I was. Um, I want to get into this because uh, this is a new segment we're doing on the show. It's called Buy yeah. or Sell. I'm going to give you a name, something you're buying or you're selling. All right. Cool. I'm a salesman. I can do this. Uh, Mac Jones. Mac Jones. Sell. So bring in Zappy. Let's let's see what we can do. I hear Tom maybe even wanting to come back. So sell him, get rid of him. Okay, I'm all right. I'm all set. I'm not buying it. He he was he's he ah yeah. So I I don't know. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Merrimack Men's Softball League. Oh, buy definitely. That's a great league. Deep in talent. Um, you want to you know improve your game. You know what I mean. And 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 face some real good competition throughout the throughout the season and stuff like that. Merrimack. And I like, they do the draft thing too, right? Yeah. Love that. Love yeah. the draft. I want to, I'm hopefully getting involved this because I can only do it once a week because I work Monday nights. Yeah. And last year I had COVID during the tryout. They're like, sorry. Yeah. You have to get the tryout. <laughs> I go, but I had COVID. You sorry. You have to get the tryout. You right. Had, they're like, there was another tryout. I was at AEW. So I was like, I missed them. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. I played one year. It's a little far. It takes me about an hour and a, you know, hour, hour and 15 minutes. So my, my staple is you, if you're going to travel, the the time you're there better be longer than you know. Yeah. And I was playing with the villain. We would we would smoke some teams. So it was like I went to maybe like one or two games because it was like 45 minutes for an hour and a half That's, or hour and 15 minute drive at you know nine at night. I so can't I do just, that for a league. Like yeah. I want my leagues to be close to me. Exactly. Uh, the pint. The pint. Buy or sell. Love those guys. Um, uh, <laughs> sell. Um, I just, you know, uh, love those guys, but they need, they need some more additions to the team. And I think that they could do really well in ease. Um, but as of right now, I'd probably sell. Okay. That, no, that's love, fair. love you, Jared. I'm sorry. <laughs> love you, Lamel, but I feel bad. Cause I really did want to do it. I really wanted Dan, to do it. Dan did this to me. <laughs> I just had Patine Fest the same weekend. Oh, okay. And I've been working that. My brother runs it. So I, it just was like, I was so like stuck between, do I go to Florida? Do I do what I do every year? And it was tough. But they are working on it. They, they are working. Yeah. No. And, I, and you can see that. Um, you know, in Florida, um, we played the second chance. They rocked us. You know what I mean? And, you know, they, they, they put, I, I think they mercy ruled us, to be honest. You know what I mean? And, and they're a good team when they want to be a good team. Um, and, and it's just they do have a couple pieces of the puzzle to kind of, you know, put together before they can, before I can buy. You know All right. I mean? No, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, my social sports. I, I'm going to have to pass cause I'm not really into, you know, I don't really know the league that well okay. or anything like that. So just to save face, I think <laughs> I'm going to plead the fifth. Um, or if, if I can do that. Yeah. Okay. Right, that's okay. Fine. Uh, here's one. Cause I really dislike this type of candy. Sour apple. Hate it. Oh my God, sell that quick, quicker than anything I've ever sold. <laughs> um, long story short, uh, you know, one of the drinking days, we were funneling some beers, having some fun, and someone snuck smearing off green apple Ugh, at the end of it. Disgusting. And I had no idea, and it ruined me for the rest. That is one, th so like any, any sour out, I can't I hate do it. it. I hate can't it. do it. I'm selling all day. Uh, Barry Bonds to the Hall of Fame. Oh man, bye. I mean, he's he's one of the best. You know what I mean? Even though there was the, you know, steroids and issue and stuff like that. I just who cares? It's Barry Bonds. Like he can hit the ball a mile. <laughs> so, I, you know what I mean? I and I'm so past the steroid crap. Yeah, I am. It's it's. Just, <laughs> It's not like they're hitting, it's like NFL, like stuff like that. Like, I don't think they should be, you know, taking steroids and stuff like that because you're, you're or NHL players because there's physical, you know, um, there's just physical contact and stuff like that. Like, I don't want a bunch of meatheads beating up, you know yeah, what I mean, yeah. stuff like that, or having a roid rage in the middle of the field because they missed a tackle. Um, but, like, baseball, it's like, 
what, what does it matter? So I can hit the ball hard? Like, I don't know. Like, it's just, I mean, his numbers did jump, but he was already a Hall of Famer. That's what I'm saying. And, and other guys were doing it, and he's like, well, I want those records, and I'll just do what they do to get them. Right. You exactly. Uh, modified. Uh, modified is becoming bigger, but I'm going to sell. I'm going to stick true to my... I'm gonna stick true to my U trip now, <laughs> even though it brought me into the game. Um, I, I just, I, I, I'm gonna sell. Okay. I'm gonna sell. Uh, he was on waivers. Someone picked him up. Baker Mayfield. <sighs> I Rams don't know. did. I, I should say. I'm a good for the Rams. Uh, sell for me. I don't know if I could take the attitude. I don't know if I could take the, you know, is is he is he he has to be really good to be able to take his his kind of temperament. You know what I mean and kind of I don't know I see him as kind of like a baby you know what I mean just a way I want my way and stuff like that so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell I'm okay. all set I'm uh, waiting for Tom <laughs> I'm waiting for Tom to come back uh, are you familiar with all elite wrestling I am not okay I'm not we'll I was a huge wrestling fan when I was younger um, but unfortunately once once they made the raw Smackdown split I think I was checked out okay yeah I think I was checking my guys are like uh, Razor Ramon, Ke- uh, Kevin Nash, um, you know, Hogan, all the NWO, like that's kind of my, you know, DX, NWO, and then you got Doink the Clown, love, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? So that was kind of my, I kind of stopped when they went, when they went I stopped for like so. a minute there, but I, I've, I'm just, a, I'm wrestling, wrestling is a big part of my life. Yeah. Uh, you, have you ever watched Heels on Stars? I have Stars? not, but I know like a lot of, I know Sam Punk's like, been on it. And, um, if you like uh, Steve Amell from Arrow, yeah. he's one of the main characters in it. Yeah, I like the concept. It's, it's, it's it awesome. feels very like what the Von Erichs were. Yeah. Um, Cart Corrals. Cart Corrals. Oh, I just had somebody comment on this. Because we've been you talking about this Put your carts away, people. Put your carts away. Thank you. Please. It's not that hard. You walked, you just walked through the whole entire store with that cart what is the five or seven extra steps to put it in the corral so the the kid collecting the carts can do his job no don't it costs zero dollars to be a decent human being put your carts away please people thank, thank you. you thank you that that is that well is said. yeah you know what i mean just uh, laziness let's see uh because we're a little short on time no uh, pineapple on pizza for <laughs> sell okay Oh, I heard only Rich Friday likes pineapple on his pizza. <laughs> I'm kidding. He he hates it, but I always make him that joke. Um, Buffalo Bills. Bye. Love Stefan Diggs. Love Josh Allen. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, love Bills Mafia. Yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely buy. They've been they've been kind of my sneaky non patriot pick um, recently. So. All right, final one. Uh, friend of yours and mine, Jared Acker. Oh, buy all day. Jared's my baby. <laughs> Love Jared. Um, he is probably he. I could call him and have the worst day. I could call him and he could just say something so stupid, and I would just be laughing for the rest of the day. <laughs> we actually have a picture um, two years ago. Well, last Worlds when we were Sandlot, um, we have a picture. We went to Gatorland. And I sat on the gator first, and he sat behind me, and we did like a little couple's picture on the gator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, after we did our little handshake that we have in front of everybody at Gatorland, and you heard, aww. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely buy on Jared Acker. He's the no, man. Jared's a great guy. Um, I really appreciate you coming on the show. No, this thank you for having me, brother. Um, I want everybody out there to have a wonderful week. Keep your heads up. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. And uh, until next time, let freedom ring.